Hey friends, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Style Garage. This is the channel about the restoration of a 66 Volkswagen Beetle convertible named Hendrick. And uh, disassembly is done. I think this is going to be episode four, possibly episode five, based on how editing goes. Um, stay tuned and see what we're working on today. Today we are working on continuing the stripping and removal of the paint uh, for two reasons. One is we are getting ready for painting. Uh, eventually the whole thing, we're gonna strip it down. Uh, but the other main reason is we are here to try to figure out what needs to be repaired. You can see a gap or a, a joint and a patch in here, patch through here, uh, weld there and uh, this a pillar has all kinds of ugly in it um, so we're trying to excavate and figure out what's going on for these repairs as well we are also looking for the most efficient best easiest cheapest friendliest funnest way to remove paint so we're trying aircraft stripper citrus strip we're trying um sanding discs um abrasive wheels knotted wire wheels gator stripping wheels extreme duty gator stripping wheels scotch bright pads and dale's just gonna chew on it and gnaw on it for a while <laughs> and see if his saliva eats the paint off um so we're gonna get started and I will let you know how we progress. Starting out with a knotted wire wheel and things are cleaning up and getting exposed well. There was a ton of Bondo in these areas. You can see there's a bunch to get out yet, but we're exposing where the patches are. Um, I, there is tons of silicone. I love you all, but you don't need to put big gobs of silicone in things. All right, let's keep grinding. All right, so Dale's working on stripping. Tell us what you got going on. All right, so we thought we'd use chemical stripper on some of the parts where we really want to, don't want any swirl marks or anything, make it easy for the, the painter to have a nice clean surface. And so that seemed like, the fenders seemed like something we could easily put outside here. Um, the painter suggested this aircraft stripper. I got it at uh, AutoZone, um, not cheap. It was 80 bucks uh, in 2002 or 2022, um, but goes on really thick. I spread it with just a Scotch-Brite sponge. And before I did that, uh, it was suggested to scratch it up to a dull surface with the, the, the rough side of the pad. And uh, now it's got to sit for 45 minutes and stay wet um and then it should peel up we'll see how that goes um it's stinky so outside is definitely what you want to do otherwise it probably you know definitely have a mask on if you're inside and it's flammable vapor so um safety caution safety caution i had glasses or goggles and and of course the, the gloves um we're also trying this citrus uh strip that that doug had around uh used on his camper in a previous video and so I'm trying that on the other fender and we'll see this one again, really thick, just spread it on with a brush. Um, we'll see if there's a difference in them. I have my opinion of what I think will happen, but we'll see what really <laughs> happens. Um, and that one I just put on with a brush. Um, the, the aircraft stripper, they said, make sure it's really thick. So I did the citrus strip really thick and I don't know what this cost. It was free to me because you had it left over. Yeah, I want to say it was like 20 bucks or something along that. So it's a little cheaper than the aircraft, a little smaller bottle. Uh, smells better, a little less harsh on your hands. Um, plastic on simply to keep it wet as long as possible. I know with a citrus strip, once you let it dry, it becomes three times as hard to get it off and it doesn't seem to be effective once it's dry. So. We're just using the plastic to 
lengthen the time that it's working. So we're gonna let it sit for a while and then see what happens. And we're gonna go back to other methods of removing paint in the meantime. Making progress here. I am gonna start removing the patches that I feel the least good about. Uh, there's a piece along here, it's like it's tack welded in there and there. Uh, I don't know what the point of this piece was. I think there's just a few tacks in the back. And then I wanna see what's underneath them. That'll give me clues of what repairs need to happen. Um, I may do the same with this patch here. Um, and then I don't know about those yet. And then there's the mother of all patches right here, which I think I wanna take out as well because I wanna see structurally how that A pillar is. So uh, time to start excavating and figure out where we hit bottom. All right, time for a reveal on the paint stripper. Who's it gonna be? Aircraft versus citrus strip. So it's been an hour. It's definitely been 45 minutes, probably more like an hour. Okay. Um, See the cars a little bit more multicolored in the background. Like paint, that just looks like dude. Not impressed. Neither of them. Oh, there we go. That's Got a little off there. But not. Usually the citrus strip will make the paint all wrinkled. Yeah. So maybe we give it more time. I guess. Sure smells good though. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's me. Yeah. But it's drying down here. Yeah. That's yeah, that's not wrinkly paint. No. no. Alright, let's All right. give a little more time. Alright, here's where we are. Two pieces out and uh, heater channels looking pretty good in here. Got one rust spot here and a thin spot there. So I think that will need to get patched. Uh, how was that? Like this, there we go. This piece was in here, not welded very nicely. Which I don't know. I don't know enough about these to know if, if this was how it came from the factory or not. But um, I will re weld this seam where I had to cut it. It's just scraped the surface, went through there, clean this up. I think we can get that to look original. Um, but I start to see where the rust is um, right in here, the bottom of this area, I don't know what you would call this. That's not a quarter panel, but um, where this meets the heater channel. So my guess is these patches were all covering up that rust. So I'm gonna work on removing those to keep exposing so we know exactly what we've got. We can cut out the rot and the cancer and fix it right and move forward. All right, it's getting dark. Dale, you put another coat on how long ago? So about an hour ago, I let it sit for an hour and it was starting to bubble, but it didn't bubble and, and whatnot as Ooh. much as I thought. So I did a second coat. Dale, you ruined your paint. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna come back. Um, Had a buff out. And so this is what I've got, but it's still, it's not peeling off the way I expected. This no. is the aircraft stripper. We definitely have some good spots here, but I don't know if that's a testament to how awesome the paint is or, you know, I'm really, you know, it's pretty thick. Maybe I needed to scratch it more um, to really get it to, to sink in. Um, yeah, know, there's whole chunks of it here that don't have any bubbling nothing. at all. 
So this is going to be a mess to it. clean. But so we're going to try cleaning it with mineral spirits. Yeah, so that's that's hmm. how that turned out. I'll have to do some work there. The the cheaper and more environmentally friendly citrus strip seems to have done maybe a better job. Maybe, I don't know. You know, I'm still not... Definitely, it's not. It's streaking some paint off, but it's not down to bare metal in very many spots. No. I feel like definitely did a better job, which it's cheaper, and you know, so there's something to be said for that. It's getting a little dark out here. It's getting late. Yeah, so Past I'll my clean bedtime. this all up, and I think we're. I don't know. Jury's still out on this one. But at this Damn. point, maybe the citrus strip is better. I think we need to, I, I gotta do it again. I gotta clean it up and see what I can do. All right, good work, Dale. Hello friends, welcome back. It is a new week for us. Probably no time has passed for you. It's Wednesday nights, we're working together uh, each Wednesday night on the car, Dale and Ron and I, and Tonight, I'm gonna to get back to work on this passenger side heater channel. Um, we're gonna buy a hinge peller patch and uh, this will end up getting cut out. Although I'm not gonna do that until I get the patch in. So I think we're gonna order that from Wolfsburg West. It'll be in by next week. Um, and then I'm gonna cut this out all the way along here Try to grind off these welds to remove these pieces for a couple reasons. One is we want a good look underneath here to make sure everything's in solid shape. Two, we'll do a patch here to try to look, make it look more original because my understanding is this sheet metal just came down and welded to the top of the heater channel. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then also I think I'd like to cut low enough to stay below the bottom of this groove, keep this hole, and then get just below the bottom of this groove here, and then uh, keep it looking as stock as possible. Then we need to figure out what to do with the patch there. So that's the goal for tonight. Also doing some investigation on this side. It looks much more solid, but we're gonna grind the paint and uh, silicone and bondo off and just take a look and start assessing things there so see how it goes thanks for being part of this so under here you can see the rest of the heater channel inner fender well be careful when you're cutting this out because i cut too far and I actually cut a hole into my inner fender well that was a mistake uh, can't quite reach the end of this cut right there and there to remove this patch uh, with my abrasive cutoff wheel. So I've got about an eighth inch to go. I'm gonna just try my air chisel and see if I can cut through the rest of the way. slowly work on grinding these out to get rid of these rest of these patches All right, all right. 
So this is night number two, trying to remove paint chemically. Um, <laughs> no more stripper jokes. <laughs> All right. What have we learned? What um, What have we been uh, underwhelmed by? Yes. So evidently, this aircraft stuff, it, the non-methylated chlor or methylene chloride. Um, in my opinion, it just flat out doesn't work. I I tried scuffing it even more dramatically and putting this stuff on and I got some but it no means peels up the way evidently it used to with the methylene chloride I've seen some people say if you get the ultra it's better but I don't want to risk it at 80 bucks um, I tried to bring it back because it was so bad but they wouldn't take it back because they you know I yeah. used it so I'm bringing this to the hazmat people so that they can throw it away because I don't want to spend any more of my life on it. Um, yeah. Citrus strip, um, people have talked about that. And that definitely, you know, it worked, um, but it still, it doesn't take it all off. And so I've done it twice now and I still have parts that are really struggling. So I just feel like this again, while it's cheaper and, and is a bit more effective, unless you're really, and I did the whole sand it and and um, put the, the plastic over it, let it set for an hour, hour plus, and parts of it scraped off really nice and clean and got me excited, but then parts of it are still totally stuck on. So I just feel like, you know, for the time and energy that we're doing, I'm gonna just sand it. I think we have better methods um, using, using some of the polycarb discs and the uh, wire wheels and so you reference the citrus strip as cheaper. You're saying it's cheaper than the aircraft stripper, correct? Yeah, so this guy cost me $80, and uh, this guy I got at Lowe's, and I think it was 30 bucks. Okay, um, so what, one of the things, uh, dear listener, that we're wrestling with is the citrus strip is cheaper than the aircraft, but it may be cheaper for us to work with these polycarb abrasive wheels or with wire wheels you know can one wire wheel at what are they five ten bucks yeah probably ten one wire wheel at ten bucks do a whole fender that took a thirty dollar bucket of citrus strip and time wise may the wire wheel may have actually been faster so that's what we're wrestling with obviously we have Lots of practice to come yet. Um, quick update on where we are, and I think we're gonna wrap up this video, because uh, I think, if I remember right, the footage I've got is getting way too long already. But um, we have rear wheel well started. We found that there was a repair here. This contour is not Correct. There was uh, a lot of bondo through here. This is incredibly bumpy. Um, and this area right here is three sixteenths of an inch, maybe eighth inch low. Um, Dale, how much bondo do you think there was there? Yeah, I would say eighth, eighth, eighth inch for sure. Eighth inch. So we have some, uh, we have some repair work to do there. Um, Similar, um, just some waviness here. We've got a big low spot. Uh, we're finding waviness and bondo. We're not finding um, lots of rust. We're finding repairs where you can see patches that are done. Um, front nose clip was put on and that was done poorly before, which is one of the main reasons we started. Ron's been working on the trunk area, slowly getting that clean with a wire brush. Um, this side looks pretty nice um, until some dork on the inside was cutting a piece of sheet metal and put two slots through from the Sorry. inside. Yeah, let's blame Ron. Um, and then I think I showed you earlier the progress here. So we're doing some sheet metal repair. Fortunately, that heater channel is like, we don't know if it's original or, or if it's been replaced, but it's in like new condition. So... Um, so we'll be doing uh, patches along the side here and a patch in the front. Um, and then next episode, we're probably going to start some investigation on this side. Obviously, there are uh, patches that were put in. Um, we're going to do some cleaning up of the welds and see 
if they need to be redone or if they're strong and then we want to redo that heater cover slide mechanism uh, that I removed over here. I don't know what that's called. I have to learn that one. So uh, we're going to call it a break until next week, Wednesday. It's my brother Ron in the back and my good friend Dale. And uh, we'll be back with Grinders Roar next Wednesday to the chagrin of the neighbors. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> they've been pretty patient with us. Uh, and we're going to slowly keep making progress. Uh, we've got some parts that we're going to order from Wolfsburg West. Um, passenger hinge panel uh, patch as well as weld-in nuts for the fenders. And one other thing that I'm forgetting. Oh, a uh, floor pan for the passenger side uh, patch that we need to put in. So don't trip, Dale. We're all good. You're all good. <laughs> Stay tuned, friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Take care.